this is a story about ordinary people who see and feel things the rest of us don't. They have a rare brain condition called synesthesia in which some of the senses, usually quite distinct, involuntarily fuse together, creating almost literally a sixth sense. Music is not only heard, it's seen and felt. Words can have flavors, and flavors can have color. It sounds bizarre, but it's more common than many people realize. And with the help of sophisticated brain imaging techniques, scientists are coming closer to understanding some of its hidden clues. And with that, perhaps opening a small window into the mysteries of the human mind. A bright flash of lavender getting dimmer and dimmer. Now we're going over a pink staircase. Ray McAllister sees music. Carol Crane feels music. I always feel guitars on my ankles and violins on my face. For Carol Steen, every letter has a color. R is a beautiful yellow, and every Z, it's like the color of beer, a light ale. And James Wannerton, he tastes words. New York is, um, it's runny eggs. <laughs> what about London? London is, um, it's mashed potato, but it's extremely lumpy mashed potatoes. Welcome to the strange and often baffling world of synesthesia, where for as long as James Wannerton can remember, words have literally triggered the part of his brain that responds to tastes and flavors. What is your first memory of synesthesia? I can remember being in a big school assembly hall listening to Lord's Prayer recitals. And it was while listening to that, um, I used to get flavor after flavor coming in. It was mostly bacon, funnily enough, that I remember. In the Lord's Prayer? Mm. What did you think? I didn't really know what to think because it was just there. It wasn't, um, it wasn't unpleasant. So I just, I suppose I just lived with it. It didn't occur to me that it was different. <laughs> Different is putting it mildly. While most of us simply hear a concert, Carol Crane actually feels it. Every instrument, every note. If you're at a symphony hall and you're listening to a classical concert, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that first violin gets up to play, and <laughs> is it like wind rushing past? Yes. Or is it's, it like a, it's like a very soft breeze that moves across my face. Pleasant? very pleasant for the most part, but I notice that every time I leave a symphony, I always feel as if I've just been run over or something, you know, like I'm just drained. So occasionally this is overwhelming? Yes. Yes. Exhausting? Yes. Do you ever wish you didn't have this? Never. <laughs> They're not on drugs. They don't have any brain disease. They haven't had a stroke. Uh, they're born this way, and they're different from the rest of us. Neurologist Richard Cytoic explored this surreal world in his book, The Man Who Tasted Shapes. He's documented hundreds of cases of synesthesia. What is synesthesia? You know the word anesthesia, which means no sensation. Synesthesia means joint sensation. And some people are born with two or more of their senses hooked together so that my voice, for example, is not just something that they hear, but it's also something that they might see or taste or feel. But how do we know that they're not making this up? Well, first of all, it's been known to medicine and psychology for 300 years. This is an experience that happens to people. They don't do anything about it. Um, the doorbell rings, they see, you know, blue round spots. And it's as real to them as... As seeing the sky is to us. It's just that their reality is different than what we perceive. For New York artist Carol Steen, synesthesia is inspiration. I'm saying a lot of red, but I'm using the yellow because every once in a while she hits it. She translates music into art, but all sounds produce color. Voices have colors as well? Mm -hmm. Your voice has a color. The low part of your voice is a smoky blue-gray, and the higher range of your voice is a bronze metallic. Where do you see this color? Is it just floating in the air in front of you? It's almost like putting on sunglasses and being able to see the world through the sunglasses. Though there are dozens of forms of synesthesia, 
Carol Steen has the most common, seeing letters and numbers in color. When you look at this page, all I see is a white page and black letters. I see a white page and I see black letters, but I also see all sorts of different colors all the way through. Is it every word on a page? Every word, every letter, yeah. Has a color? Has a color. And the colors never change. She's seen the same letters in the same colors her whole life. She painted some letters for us to demonstrate the way she sees them. What color is an A? It's a beautiful pink. I can't imagine learning to read, learning your letters, learning your numbers, and seeing them in colors. I can't imagine not. Carol Steen says that the letter A is a very pretty girlish pink. She's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's wrong. Yes, it's a very soft, kind of a dove gray blue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Synesthetes may disagree on what color the letter A is, but there's one thing they usually share, a sense of isolation. Many are embarrassed, afraid of being ridiculed, so often they keep their condition to themselves. I remember over the years having discreet experiences with people, such as asking them, what color is your three or five or something like that, and I would get a look like, are you crazy? <laughs> so I would, I stopped asking the question. When I discovered that it was normal, and that there was a name for it, and that there were other people who had the same experiences, then I began to appreciate it. How old were you then? Would you believe four years ago? <laughs> she also discovered that people close to her were keeping the same secret. Her sister, niece, and son all have synesthesia. Turns out, it runs in families. I always thought it was something I was choosing to do. And it never occurred to me until when I found out that there was a name for this that I was the one who had no choice in it. You cannot turn this off. I can't turn it off. Although most people have never heard of synesthesia, it's hardly a new discovery. By 1910, scientists had written dozens of papers describing the condition. It was a curiosity, believed to affect creative types. The writer Vladimir Nabokov had it, and so does the painter David Hockney. But interest in synesthesia died down because it was too difficult to prove, until now. Here it comes. Medical technology can now reveal what happens inside the synesthete's mind. What we're going to do here is we're going to image your brain. Dr. Vilyanur Ramachandran is a neurologist who studies quirks of the brain. What it allows you to do is to see what part of the brain lights up mm -hmm. uh, or becomes activated when you're doing something. Mm -hmm. His subject today is 27-year-old Ray McAllister, the man who sees music. Okay, here comes the music, and then the scan. During the scan, McAllister's brain lit up in surprising ways. Not only did music stimulate his audio cortex, but his visual cortex as well. He wasn't just hearing music, he was actually seeing it. That area lit up in him. So you know there is activity in the visual area of his brain, even though he's only listening to music. Music for McAllister is a fantasia-like experience. An explosion of color, many colors. Lavender violins, pink brass, gray timpanies, explosions of color all over the place. It looks very beautiful. Which is all the more surprising since Ray McAllister is blind. He lost his sight when he was 12, the result of a degenerative eye disease, but he never lost his synesthesia. Is it like fireworks in your head? That would be a very good analogy. It would be like somebody is throwing glowing paint onto a canvas and just <laughs> throw, hey, throw some paint here, throw some paint here. But most people would think if you're blind, you're in complete darkness. You're not. I may actually be seeing more beautiful colors than most sighted people. Though scientists can prove synesthesia exists, they still don't know what causes it. Some think it's cross-wiring in the brain, 
Others believe we're all born with synesthesia, but our senses separate as we grow older. For most of us, that is, but not for James Wannerton. Let me just read some words to you, and you tell me what comes up. Future. That's very strong, tin peaches. Friday. Yeah, I mean, that, that's spam, but it's fried spam. It must be fried spam, and it's got to be a certain thickness. What about my name? What about Vicky? Yeah, Vicky is uh, crayon. It's, it's the greasy, the greasy taste. The sort of waxy, yeah, greasy. waxy, greasy taste. Yeah. Synesthesia has caused him more than a few problems in his personal life too. I've had girlfriends with names I just couldn't stand saying. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Tracy. Tracy was, is a very strong flavoured name, and it's flaky pastry. Whenever I was in a company, that's what I thought of constantly. Was this flaky pastry? Mm. That was the end of Tracy. That was the end of Tracy. It sounds amusing, but for Wannerton, synesthesia is a constant battle. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost it. He struggles to concentrate, trying not to be confused by the ever-changing flavors. At the end of the day, do you feel sensory overload? Most certainly, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'd stick my head in a bucket of ice cold water sometimes. Do you want a cure? I don't want to cure because I've, already, I've had it since I can remember and taking it away, I wouldn't like the thought of that. Researchers like Richard Saitoic aren't looking for a cure. He thinks studying synesthetes offers remarkable clues to the mysteries of the human mind. These people experience the world in a different way. Their senses are wired together differently and so synesthesia Instead of being a, a quirk, an oddity that you just dismiss, it's a little peephole, and you move the peephole around and look through it, and you see this big expanse on how the mind works and how the brain is organized. For people who are finding out about this for the first time mm -hmm. and say, wait a minute, I, that describes what I have, is there any reason that they should feel ashamed? Oh, no. Oh, no. No. They should appreciate their gifts. What if you woke up tomorrow and that gift was gone? I just think the world would be rather flat. 